Uh, I don't think anyone will really benefit from this video because it's such an old car, but anyways, here's how you jack up. Well, I guess the jacking up part will work. I'm gonna show how to change the oil on this 2003 Toyota Prius. So here you got these two notches here, and you're gonna want to use your jack. You can use the one that came with your car. Um, and then, I don't know how I'm gonna show this, but you get this, um, this rod thingy here. And then you use one hand to hold here and the other one to turn this. And you use that kind of as a lever. I don't know if I can, how can I film this? Let's see here. So like this, grab it, and then you just crank it like this. All right, and that'll lift your car up. Um, if you are gonna be changing your oil, you want to put something Usually you get like an actual jack stand, not one of these, because these can break a lot easier. So I'll show that in a bit. I'm gonna get the actual jack stand after I crank this thing up, and then I'll put that underneath, all right? I'll be back in a bit. All right, so other things I forgot to mention, you wanna put something underneath the tires so that your car doesn't roll, uh, roll down or move around. If it's on a flat surface, mine's actually on an incline or like that. But if it's on a flat surface, you can put one in front of the tire and one behind the tires on both sides, just so it doesn't roll anywhere, okay? So like I was saying, get one of these solid metal jack stands, so it doesn't move anywhere. If you can, uh, adjust it up another until it's like just barely reaching. Let's see if this will fit, okay? So here you can see, the stand right here will just barely fit, okay? And then what you wanna do, so the car doesn't have any chance to just suddenly fall, you want to actually lower it slightly. So I'm just lowering this until the jack is actually helping hold up the car. And that will, there you go, you can hear it kind of crunching. So I'll leave it there, that way both jacks are actually supporting the weight of the car okay um, you can actually uh, I should have mentioned if you're changing a spare tire you can also use the jack for that um, you'll probably you'll want to actually loosen these nuts while the car is on the ground and then you lift up the car and then loosen it the rest of the way <laughs> otherwise the tire can actually turn a little bit okay all right so um, I like to tilt it this way because the oil bolt is right there and I like to tilt it that way so that the oil can drain out better that way. So what you're going to need, you want to make sure you get the right size bolt or socket I mean, socket, socket wrench, whatever you want to use. Okay, um, I forget which size it was, let me see. I don't think I'll get it right on the first try. Um, and then there's also the two kinds. You can use metric or the imperial system. So let's see, was it this? Okay, so this will fit, which is a 9 16 okay? And if you wanna know the metric one, let me see if I can get a metric one that will fit. Um, I think it's like a, 15 if I remember correctly oh, I haven't done this in a while so nope okay I'd actually use smaller because 15 is kind of loose let's try a 14 that fits but still kind of loose try a 13 that hurt Okay, no, so I would use a 14. 14 is the best fit for this. So you can use a 14 millimeter. Um, it's like the 9 16th also works, but it's also a little bit loose. So I would use the 14. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't think the next one up, the half inch one will work properly. I can try it. Somebody's texting me right now. Yeah, so I'd either use the 9 16 or the 14 millimeter. Let me check my messages and I'll be back. Okay, one other thing I forgot to mention. You'll want to know what kind of oil your car uses. So this says SAE 5W30, that's what they recommend. 
Um, they did come out with newer, like lower viscosity oils now that are more um, fuel efficient. But uh, here you can see with filter 3.7. So if you replace this filter as well, you'll put about 3.7 uh, quarts of oil. And then, or is that liters? I guess liters, 3.9 quarts or 3.3 imperial quarts. Okay, and then if you don't replace the filter, which I don't know why you would do that, I always replace the filter, then you put less, 3.4. But either way, I always put slightly less and then I check to see the oil level because a lot of time there's still a little bit of oil in the system unless you let it drip for a very long time. So usually I don't put the exact amount. All right, and then you'll need one of these little drip pan things. And let's get that thing out. Um, the oil filter is a bit more difficult to remove sometimes. Sometimes you have to use like a rubber glove or a rubber band. Um, and then other times you have to get like an actual socket wrench thing that's designed for it. So depending on how tight your oil filter was screwed on, um, you might need a special tool to remove that. But anyways, I'm going to put this away and then we're going to go ahead and remove the oil plug. Whoops. I did that upside down. All right, I'm going to be back. I need to clean this all up. All right, so I'm actually going to clean up that stuff later. Um, but basically you want this oil pan drip thingy. I have to open, make sure it's open. Okay, you can get a, you don't have to get this specific one, but you'll put that under there. But usually what you want to do first is get the socket. Okay, make sure you have it going the right way. That's in tightening mode, so you want it to twist counterclockwise to loosen the bolt. Okay, so what you want to do, get under the car, look at the bolt, and then you want to get this on, and again, you want to twist it counterclockwise this way. Once you get it loosened up, okay, what you want to do, get this thing right there, and then you twist this by hand, okay? And you want to kind of do it quick because the oil is going to start dripping out. You don't want to get all of your hands and there you go. And then you just let this drain completely, okay? So I'm going to let that drain and then I'll be back. I'm going to clean up all those washer things that I threw all over the place. Oops. Open up this air thing. So there's this air release valve so that it doesn't keep splattering like that. Forgot to open that. Okay. I'll be back once that's done draining. All right, so I got all of those back in order. Hopefully I didn't lose any. Oops, let's turn off that. Oops, I thought I was recording, but apparently I wasn't. So anyways, this bolt, I took it out from that little tray and I wiped it up with paper towels. And a lot of people, I don't know, they recommend you replace this little um, gasket here. Um, but I've never replaced that washer and I've never had a problem with my oil leaking. I have had a problem with oil leaking from the cylinders or something um, around the spark plug. So I've had that gasket replaced and I haven't had any oil problems since. So I don't know why everyone recommends to replace this, but I've never had oil leaking from there. So anyways, once you do that, once you clean it all up with the paper towels, just screw this thing back in. Okay, hand tighten it as tight as you can. Um, I already got some paper towels here, so I'll use these. But you want to clean the area around there, okay. Alright, just clean it all up. Sorry, it's hard to record while I'm doing this, but uh, you get the point. Just clean it all up around there. Okay. Alright. Like that. After that, you can push this out of the way. Grab the tool, the wrench. Uh, make sure to switch it so that it turns the bolt clockwise now. And then just tighten that up, okay? Tighten it up. As you can see, I'm not holding it all the way down there. You don't need it that tight, so I'm just tightening it as much as I can from there. Um, if you want, if you're not as strong, you can hold from down here, but you don't want to super tight crank it because then you can actually damage or crack that okay so that's good enough all right and now we're going to 
loosen up the oil filter. So the oil filter, let me see if I can show this. There's not really a right side up or upside down, so. But the oil filter is right here, okay? So to remove that, oops, I'm moving my phone. I don't want to get that oil on my phone. So I'm going to move this so I can drop the oil filter in there. But basically, this one, um, if you can't do it with your hand, you might have to use some rubber gloves or something to get more torque. Um, if you can't, then there's a special like wrench tool that you can use to get these out. But basically, you just twist this. So mine, I didn't super, super tighten it, so I, I was able to easily get it out. And then just twist this, it'll start leaking. Let the oil drip into the pan. And then what you wanna do after it's not dripping too much, you just untwist the whole thing and let it drop in there. You flip the, um, the oil filter upside down and let it drain, okay? So it's not dripping so crazy now. So you just twist this off. I know it's not that good of a view, I'm sorry. But there we go, okay? And then you just flip this upside down, leave that in there, just like that. Let it drain and let that drip out. Once that's done, you dry that off or clean it off with paper towels and then I'll show you the next step, all right? I'll be back. Let me pause this, I'm gonna clean my hands a little bit. Okay, so here I'm cleaning out the oil filter area with paper towel. Okay, so I'm just cleaning it out. It doesn't need to be super, super clean because the oil's just gonna get gross again, but just clean what you can, okay? All right, and then what you want to do for the oil filter, I'm going to throw these papers there, move this back over. Okay, I'm going to get the oil filter and prep it. So what you want to do, let me go grab the oil. You can use whatever type. I actually had like a bunch of leftover Mobile One and then I just poured them all in this because we had a bunch of like different ones. So you don't have to worry, mixing oil, mixing the different types of, or brands of oil isn't really much of an issue as long as you change it often enough, okay? So what you wanna do is you wanna pour the oil into this. Um, probably need something to make it higher so it's not gonna pour so fast once it gets there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this on here Hopefully I don't just spill it everywhere. Uh, let's turn this around. Try and get a more level surface. Okay. All right, so what you wanna do is you want to fill up this thing, okay? There we go. Doesn't need to be completely full, just put some oil in there to make it so it's started. So that way when it goes through your engine and stuff, it's not gonna just be a bunch of air. If you want, you can pour it till it's almost completely full. It's hard to do this while looking at a camera, so I'll try, but. Okay, and since I'm already filling this up, it did say um, 3.7, but I'm just gonna put like, Usually I'll put three and a half, and usually that's more enough, so I'll put a little bit less than three and a half. Uh, I'm gonna clean my finger off a little bit here. Okay, so what you do once you get the oil like this, you wanna get a little bit of the oil, and then just rub it around the rim here. I'm gonna put this down so I don't accidentally knock it over. Okay, you wanna put the oil around the rim, and this gives you a better seal when you tighten it. It also allows you to easily tighten this by hand better, so because then it will slide, okay? All right, so there we go. We got that oil filter prepped. So we're gonna set this aside. Um, it'll help if you have a funnel to fill up the oil. Um, if you don't have a funnel, usually what I do is I just cut a bottle um, in half, and then I use, um, I use the bottle as a funnel. So I use the, the drinking part as the little funnel spout, okay? So I'm gonna move this over now. Grab the filter. Let me see if I can, hopefully I'll be able to show this. Okay. 
probably damaging my shirt right now. Right? And then you can see there's where you screw the filter onto. Grab the oil filter. Put that up there. And then usually what I do is I twist it backwards first just to make sure it lines up and then I'll twist it on just like that there you go and then you don't need to over tighten it just tighten it enough okay you don't need to use all your strength to tighten it and there we go that should be good okay all right so we got all of that in I'm gonna take this out this is all garbage okay and now we're gonna lower the car back down and then add the oil so want you can get a bunch of paper clean all this oil off usually I'll use um, newspaper newspaper works really well for cleaning this thing off but um, yeah so I'm gonna open or what we're gonna do now is lower the car back down and then we're gonna put the oil in okay so let me move this stuff out of the way all right move that okay so to lower the car we're first going to have to remove this stuff, of course. So, because I lowered this on top of the jack, I have to raise it up a little bit. Okay, I'm trying to do this with one hand, which is kind of... Nobody does this with one hand usually. <laughs> You'll want to use both hands since you have both of them. Alright, let's take this jack out. Need to raise it up some more. It's still stuck in there. Okay. Alright, let's take this out. All right, and now we're just gonna lower this down. So you just keep twisting it like this. So normally you use two hands and you crank this thing. <laughs> but since I'm recording, I'm gonna do it with one hand. Isn't it kind of cool that I can do this with one hand? <laughs> it's gonna take forever. So I'm gonna put my phone down and I'm gonna use two hands. Won't be as fun to watch, but uh, maybe I can put my phone on here. Kind of watch, not really. I guess I'll zoom out more. There we go. Then let's do this. All right. So you just lower the car down. Just like this. If you don't have a jack, you can also have your car like half on a curb or something, but. I don't know if you'll, depending where you live, some people might complain. Okay. There we go. Got that out. Alright, so now what we're going to have to do is pop open the hood. Uh, I think I already pulled the thing, but uh, you want to pull the thing to pop open the hood. This one here. So I already pulled that. Okay. Once you do that, you can get underneath the car. So right under here, there's a little spring mechanism. You pull up on that and that releases it. That's the spring mechanism right there. Okay, inside you'll see this bar and I'll pull that out. Let me see if I can hold this up with my head. There we go, pull that out. All right, be careful not to get it caught on stuff inside the car. And then you wanna put it in that little hole over there. It's hard to do this well. Uh, sorry, I'm gonna have to. There you go. So now I just put that in the hole there. All right. Okay. And then the place that you fill up the oil. Oh. I don't know if somebody's calling me. The place that you fill up the oil is right here. Even on here, they'll actually tell you what type of oil. SAE 5W30. Okay. So. I'm gonna get a funnel and then I'll be back. All right, so I got a bottle. I cut the bottom off of it. So we're gonna use that as a funnel. So what you wanna do, take this lid off. Okay, just twist this off. Make sure you put it back. Um, sometimes I put it here, but then I had one time I actually forgot to put that back. So I'm actually gonna leave it right next to this. So it's kind of like, there's no way I'll forget, okay? Then what you do, you just get, oops, the bottle. Okay, actually I might forget if I put it there. Okay, we'll put it there. All right, so I cut like 
at the bottom so that way it reaches really high up it's easier to do if you do this um, make sure the bottles clean and dry okay so now we got I got two kinds of oil some old stuff so 0w30 since it's meant more for cold weather um, cold weather season is getting over soon so I'm just gonna use that okay there's about one and a half as you can see I stored it it's all gross it's covered with cobwebs but it was just in my garage okay so I'm gonna pour that out one and a half Okay, you don't want to pour too fast because it can it can overflow out the other thing. Okay, so we're just going to put all of that in. One and a half. I'm going to just let it drip a little bit. Okay. All right. So it said 3.7. I already put some into the filter. So I'm actually only going to put about three and a half. This was about one and a half. I'll put a little bit less just to be safe because otherwise I have to drain it out um, through the thing. Some people they like to use the extra quart because it's less than four quarts. Some people will actually use one quart just to flush the system but I don't feel that's necessary. My car has over 250,000 miles and I've never done that so I don't know if you do that maybe it'll last longer I don't know but um yeah so Train this okay that's probably enough I'll just leave it sideways like this and then if more comes out I'll pour it out okay so I'll leave it like this for now all right we'll grab the other one so I already put one and a half this one has one two three about three and a half so I'll put another let's see two so I'll just pour it down to this line and that should hopefully be enough Okay. All right, so let's pour this in as well. it there there's a lot more to go okay I'm dripping some oil on the seals of my car okay so I'm gonna test it first so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna put this lid back on for now to check the oil level you want to get a piece of paper okay there's this little dipstick thing. Usually I would run my car for five minutes first and then let it sit for about five minutes just to check the oil level. I run for about a minute and then let it sit for five minutes to check the oil level. So for now I'm just doing a quick test. So there's the dipstick here to pull, just pull this up. I have to be careful because I always end up hitting my knuckle there. So just pull this one up. Be careful, it's gonna hurt. I'm gonna knock my hand there. Okay, Let's see if there's an easier way I can do it like this. There we go. Okay, so just like that. And what you wanna do, if I can have my phone sit there, okay, is you take the paper, you wipe this whole thing off, okay, then you stick that back in. After you do that, pull it back up, don't wipe it. And then you check the dots here. So here you can see the oil level. Hmm. It's probably not even going to reach it because I think I'm like a quart lower than it should be. I'm going to do it one more time. Check it. Actually, can't tell. It looks like the oil's all the way up there. I think it actually went too high. So usually you can see the line where the oil is hitting and that's how you know that it's high enough. Okay, so let me dip it in one more time. Yeah, the oil's like going up. So I might have to run the engine just to let it flow through the system to make sure. Okay, so 
So I'm actually going to do that. Let's take this out for now. Okay, we'll put this lid on. I'm going to start up the car. And the car is actually usually pretty smart. If there's not enough oil, it'll actually warn you. Um, but that's only if it's super low. So you usually don't want to get to that point or you'll like damage your car. But if you did close to the amount it said, you should be fine. Okay. So I'm going to start up the car and hopefully it'll be fine. Sounds normal. Okay. So usually you just let it run for a while. Here you can see, oh, I'm gonna reset these. I like to, there's these trip A, trip B things. I like to leave trip B for like my oil counter. So as long as your regular 12 volt battery never dies, that counter will be fine. Um, but usually people will write down this odometer number for the last time they change their oil. Here you can see I have 261,774 miles on this car. So yeah, okay. So sounds fine right now I'm gonna shut it off I'll let it run a little bit more I was kind of like uh, procrastinating on changing the oil so it was actually starting to not sound too great <laughs> the, la the last time before so it actually sounds a lot smoother right now okay so I'm gonna let it sit for a little bit but I'll show you what happens if you check the oil right now after not really letting it sit. It's going to be, usually it'll be like really high because the oil's just like sloshing around in there. And it's still kind of up. Okay, so the dipstick is there. Let me see if I can show this. Okay, let me pull the dipstick back up. Back in. The oil is, um, if you can see the, oops, where is it? If you can see like the brownish layer. So here you can see it's getting close to the dot. It's like right there. So usually what you do after it sits long enough, you'll see the oil where the level is. So I have to let my car sit for a little bit since I ran the engine just so it can kind of um, flow back down to where it should be. And then I'll do this test again. Okay. So I'll be back. I'm going to let my car sit for about five minutes and then I'll check it again. Oh, in the meantime, I guess I'll clean up this other stuff. So you also want to check, make sure nothing's leaking. Make sure it looks okay. So there's no new droplets forming. Okay. Let me get under there. I'm going to dry this and clean it off. It did drip some there, but that's not from the thing. What is this? Oh, I must have hit something and this, I must have hit some cardboard and it got, fell inside my car thing. Anyways, get under there, you can see it's not really dripping. That's just shiny from wiping the oil all around. Okay, so it should be okay. Yep, there's no, it's not leaking. Okay. So I'm gonna clean up this stuff. <sighs> Make sure I don't flip it the wrong way again. So we'll take this thing off. <sighs> I don't know if I can do that with one hand. Come on, there we go. All right, so we got this out. So we're gonna put this one here. There we go. Put the booklet out of the way. I'm gonna put that back in my car. Push that back in, okay. Go. and I'm gonna put this here okay so I don't know that design <laughs> I have to always remember I always end up flipping it the wrong way I've done that a few times but flip that back over okay watch these this has nothing to do with the car stuff so if you want you can just fast forward okay oops there's a piece of tape on there all right, I'm gonna put this back in my car. Got that whole mess to deal with. Okay, I don't know if the filters need to be thrown somewhere special. I usually just like drain out as much oil as possible and then toss it in the trash. If that's not right, feel free to let me know. 
but usually I'll take the box from the new one and then I'll just put the filter in there okay usually I'll put it facing upwards because there's still more oil coming out from this usually I'll put this facing upwards like that close it up and get that ready to be tossed or recycled all right so I'm gonna get a bunch more paper towels and we're just gonna clean off this oil stuff okay You want you can use gloves when you do this so you don't get oil all over yourself because this is toxic stuff I guess all right but whatever I just wash it off with Dawn dish soap Dawn dish soap works really well for getting this stuff out okay some more paper towels all right you don't have to clean this perfectly because you are just going to use it for oil again later anyways but uh just so it's not dripping everywhere okay just like that and i'll use that to grab all the other ones and then we're gonna toss this all right we'll toss it with this one all right so i'm back sorry i got a call and I did use this wrong. This is for that. And then this spot's for the oil filter. But uh, whatever. Okay, so I'm just going to close this up so it doesn't leak everywhere. And then toss this, this garbage. Okay. And it's probably been about five minutes, so I'll check um, the oil level now. Um, and then the oil, at least in my area, the waste oil... Um, they pick it up, the recycling picks it up, you just put it next to your trash can in a, usually you want it in like a plastic milk jug container, gallon milk jug. I don't know if they'll take it if I leave it in this oil thing. And then I think the auto parts like O'Reilly's and stuff will also take the liquids. But um, yeah. Okay, so let's check the oil level now. Okay. Same thing. Pull the dipstick up wipe it off all right and then after you wipe it off push it back in pull it back up and then you check here so according to this the oil level is good i think i put enough already it could be also because my car is not on a flat surface because i have the front tilting forward so i might have to do that again on a usually you would do this on a flat level surface not on a slope like this, like how I'm doing it. But, uh, looks like it's good. So that's pretty much all there is to it. Make sure you screwed back on that cap. I already did that. And you're good to go. So hopefully this video helped you guys. If it did, like and subscribe. I don't really do these car videos as much. Um, though on my car I have replaced all the spark plugs. Um, I've done I've replaced the oil pan because I I went up a, a Dip too fast and it scraped the oil pan and it leaked out and I had to replace that and then I also did um, Transmission fluid or not was it the transmission fluid? Um, it wasn't the transmission fluid the coolant and what else? Um, everyone does the washer fluid. That's easy enough. I've done a few of the fuses um, I've replaced the, the gas pedal on this car because the sensor in it got screwed up. And the coolant here, I might have to put more coolant actually. It's getting on the low side, so I'm going to put more coolant in here as well. Um, this one is always, this one's always full, but this one is like, um, it's getting down there. I can't, where is it? I can't see. It's hard to see from the, the video, but it's, it's, it's above the low, but it's getting there. It's getting low. Oh, here you can see it on that side. Okay, so I'm going to fill that up. There's some more fuses and relays in here. There's the air filter. I've done that as well. This air filter is pretty easy to remove. You just flip these two things up, pull these latches down. There's another latch on this side. 
and you can actually just take the air filter out. I might have to change it too. It's getting a little gray, but I don't use my air conditioner and stuff much, but I'll probably change that as well. Okay. I ordered a whole bunch, but I don't know where they went, so... Alright, make sure I put this back in right. Alright. Sorry, the camera's not not doing a very good job filming this. But anyways, that's pretty much all there is. Um, there's also, like, this for the AC, if your AC um, is leaking or something. You have these, you can refill it with Freon. Um, but yeah. That's pretty much all I'm going to show on this. Hopefully this video helped you guys. If it did, like and subscribe again. I usually do computer repairs and things, not cars, like I was saying earlier. But thanks for watching. I'll see you in another one. Bye.